Hi everybody, Miss Hudson here. Today, I'm going to try making bread. I adapted this recipe from Artisan Bread in five minutes a day. I'll drop a link in the comments to this video so you can find out more about their recipe and way of making bread. Um, we will start by the most important step when making food and that is washing the hands. We're gonna do that first. So, so here's my clean hands, dry them off. Next up, we're going to check our ingredients and materials that we need. So for this recipe, we need warm water, yeast, salt, and flour. Six and a half cups of flour is a pretty big amount. Um, I have all of those things right here. I've got my two kinds of flour. Together I should have six and a half, my salt, and my yeast. I've got a cup measuring uh, device, and I've got a tablespoon measuring device. I also have a nice flat butter knife. You'll see where when we need that one. Uh, the other thing that we need is a big container, big enough to hold a pretty large amount of dough because the amount that we're gonna make can actually make four little loaves of bread. So we also need a big container to get us started. All right, um, other things that you can think of when you're planning to do this recipe are how are you going to bake it in the oven? Um, there are a couple different options for baking. You could use a baking stone like this, and you could preheat this in the oven. Um, you will also need a tray to pour some hot water in right when you put the bread in because that's going to steam it. Um, and if you don't have a baking stone like this one, you could use a loaf pan with some parchment paper. I also like to use this silicone baking mat because nothing will stick to it, including really sticky dough. All right, so there are some other options to get ready before you get started. Um, it's always good to check your recipe too to make sure that you're gonna have enough time for what you want to do. Bread does take a little more than five minutes to prepare, um, but if you look through the recipe that I linked to, um, you'll see that you'll need at least two hours for a rise, and then you can shape the dough and you know get it ready for the oven at that point, or you can refrigerate it, which makes the dough last all week, and then you can just uh, take a quarter of the dough at a time and shape it. So let me get ready to show you the next steps. I've got my ingredients, I've got my materials. Uh, let me show you what we're gonna do next. All right, I've got my three cups of warm water and that's what I'm gonna start with. Um, medium warm, not hot, hot, just warm water. Should be like a little tingly with warmth. Um, we're gonna put some salt in here, one and a half tablespoons of salt. Uh, you could do just one tablespoon of salt. I like a little extra. Um, after we get the salt mixed in there, now we've got some salt water. Now it's time for our tablespoon of yeast. Some people will say, no, don't put the yeast in with the salt, but we're gonna add the flour really soon. Yeast is actually a tiny microorganism and it uses sugars and carbohydrates like the stuff in flour as its food. Um, so next up, we're gonna give the yeast its food of some flour. I like to just sort of slosh it to make sure everything is mixed together pretty well, not perfectly well. And my bread is a mix of whole wheat flour and white flour. And I need my one cup measure and a nice straight edge butter knife because I'm going to scoop and then scrape the top. So I need six and a half cups of flour total. I like to do about two and a half cups of whole wheat and then the rest with the white flour. So if you'd like a little math problem while I do my two and a half cups here. One and two. I'm just going to estimate a half. That's 
seems about right. So there's my two and a half of the whole wheat flour. And now I'm going to go up to six and a half cups with my white flour. That was two and a half. This will be three and a half. Four and a half. Five and a half. And six and a half. Alright, so now I've got all of my ingredients in there. And this same knife that I used, I could use that to stir the dough or a wooden spoon. Um, or if you really like to play with dough, you can use your bare hands. I'm going to start by stirring it with my knife. That's a good way to get it started. So this time I used two and a half cups of flour that was whole wheat, and I used four cups of flour that was white flour. <clears throat> and you could play with that ratio a little bit. You could use more or less of one of the flours and see how it turns out. This for me is a nice balance. All right, so now all of my water has been soaked up. It's a pretty dry, rough dough, and I'm going to just use my hands to kind of press it together, make sure that all the flour is worked in. And if there's any dry flour left, after I do this sort of like working in of all the flour, you could add a few more sprinkles of water. The dough is nice and warm from the warm water, and that's what yeast like. They like to have something to eat, which is the carbohydrates in the flour, and they like to have water. And that helps them to make air bubbles, and all those little tiny yeasty beasties in the dough will make teeny tiny air bubbles, and that'll help the dough puff up and be nice and springy. All right, I've worked in most of the dough here, and my hands are really dirty. All right, let me get cleaned up and I'll get right back to it. All right, clean hands again. And this is what the dough looks like with all of that uh, flour incorporated. You can see it's kind of a rough dough. And its next step is going to be to rise for two hours. You will not have to wait around for that. I'm going to put that off to the side and I have some dough here that I made a few days ago that's been hanging out in my fridge. That's what the dough that's been refrigerated looks like. Has a nice smell to it. And this is a uh, half of the amount that I originally made, so I can make two loaves out of this. I'm gonna look at this ball of dough. Sometimes it helps to put a little bit of oil or flour on my hands. This feels pretty wet to me, so I'm gonna use a little flour today. So I've got a little flour on my hands and that'll help it not stick as much. Taking this ball of dough and I'm just kinda, of, I'm gonna try to tear it in half. I could have also used kitchen shears. Now I have a ball of dough and the technique that they use in artisan bread is to grab and pull and sort of wrap the top around the bottom of the bread. And then to do that four times, kind of rotating the bread and now stretching this part under. Okay, now I'm rotating again and I'm stretching this part under. All right, I think that was four times. Now I'm going to place this loaf on my silicone mat in order to have its rest. And I can either put this dough back in the fridge or I could shape it now and bake it up after I bake this loaf. So I'm going to pull from the top 
around under to the bottom. Another time, one more time, and about one more time. Everything's kind of tucked up and under there, and I'm going to put it on the silicone mat to rest. So now I have these two lovely loaves, and they are going to hang out on this silicone mat for 40 to 90 minutes. I'm also not going to make you wait around for that, so I'll check back with you in my next video.